about uh, I was going to talk about Richard on Ivan and Tech at some point. Um, if there's if that was a nothing burger or not, uh, or if anything interesting. I think the only thing OKX was confirmed now, like he officially said it, right? Yeah, that was the thing. Did. So that was something that uh, I know if people speculated on too. I think Dixon brought up a while back to uh, some big Chinese exchange. I think a lot of us assumed OKX, but now he actually said it. He like, it's funny when you're when you're listening to it. It's like okay, he says exchange, and then Ivan asks him again something. And he's like, oh yeah, OKX. I'm just gonna drop it right here. Let's do it. Okay, so that happened. Um, and then uh, says ETH 2.0 instead of BSC won't cause a delay and may even be faster. I uh, I hope so. I certainly hope so. I don't know how a big architectural change like that wouldn't cause a delay or reallocation resources, but I certainly hope so. Logically, it makes sense. Um, given, you know, that's pretty much already built and audited. So, you know, from that aspect, I can see it. But yeah, to your point, you know, we know how the, you know, you know, to some aspect, how uh, development works and to, to make that kind of drastic switch. Yeah, can potentially cause some delays. Yeah. And it's not like we we know there's not like the roadmap we're going by anyways. So even if there was a delay or not, we would never really know unless it took another year or something. And then we're like, oh, that was the E2.0 thing. That's what happened. That was what happened. Oh, God. Sorry. I've, everyone's panicking now. No, it's probably not going to be next December. Mid-May 2023. You never know. But uh, I'm still hoping January. I'm still hoping early spring somewhere through there. Nothing else. Um. Yeah, what do you got, Giff? What, what do you, you think? Uh, we talked about this a little bit on uh, 100% uptime, but yeah, do you think uh, big deal, nothing burger as far as uh, it taking any longer for Pulse Chain? Uh, we know it's good. It's a good change, but it, although if you're a uh, validator, maybe you're a little confused right now um, or, you know, it's set up hardware and stuff for that. That's going to be interesting to work out. But yeah, what, what do you think about the change? Well, for starters, I'm just super excited that I didn't bring a slideshow today. It feels nice not having to do a bunch of work before. Requirements have been relaxed for non-100% oh, of time. Yes. I feel so relaxed now. But no, I they mean. They were never required for that, by the way. <laughs> just, he's awesome. He just like does it. He just goes out of his way to do it. So. Yeah, I just hold myself to that standard. But uh, no, I mean, Alex, you know, from Hedron, uh, he had tweeted about it um, probably expediting the process of, uh, you know, because the consensus code is going to be basically written and laid out. And they can go ahead and adopt any uh, upgrades down the road that they they choose to adopt. So, I mean, theoretically, yeah, I mean, that that could be very bullish on you know the the time horizon. Um, but uh, you know, beyond that, he did talk about the uh, you know delegating tokens and how that's just not a thing um, on the uh, the new code that's going to be forked over. So. We were talking about it last time, and I was saying I was like, I don't think we know for sure that they're, you know, that that's not going to be the case. But after hearing Richard talk about it, I think we could pretty much bet that you know it's just going to be a completely different uh, a beast that's going to take on the uh, the ETH two point staking model as opposed to um, what they were building before. Uh, yeah. Um, as far as from like a validator standpoint, um, you know, aside from like you know, given what he already confirmed today, as far as like what they can potentially earn. There is a slight upgrade that they need to do to their hardware um, to fit the, you know, the new consensus model and the validator model. Uh, but it's not anything drastic to like, you know, what anyone was running a validator now. But there is, they do have to do some minor updates as far as like the hardware is concerned. Hmm. Yeah, because he the way you said it on the uh, on the interview was like, oh, sorry about your sorry about your hardware and stuff. So that yeah, that was he just being kind of like, was he just not? I don't know. So it, I can give you some context. Bit. So mm -hmm. um, if you go to um, what was already listed as the minimum and recommended requirements versus E2.0, everything's okay. now based off of E2.0. So the requirements are a little bit higher. I think it believe um, you need a minimum of like about one terabyte, a uh, minimum of eight cores and like about 32 gigs of RAM, um, you know, as far as okay. like the minimum requirements versus uh, prior to that, that would be like a you know like a a1 setup for like a validator on pulse chain pre if you know 2.0 fork so um yeah there, okay. there's, there's some slight changes but it's nothing you know out of the ordinary so the in minimum requirements for for pulse chain were less than eth 2.0 before correct right? correct that makes sense okay all right well, well maybe uh people who had you know pretty beefy setups will still you know maybe nothing will change for them except you know, obviously new software that's good that's good to know 